ียลูนทีส
the strains or types of animals held at Blenheim, predominantly Barbados black belly type, West African type, Virgin Islands, Blackhead Persian, Catadine, and there are a number of local crosses. The operating system at Blenheim, we have the young stock animals, newly weaned animals, up to free breeding age, and the rams are kept at the blending site. <coughs> the breeding animals, the ewes mm -hmm. and the mature rams are kept, well, the rams are transferred at the time of breeding, and the mature ewes are kept at the study farm site. At the time of the investigation, mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. level, the mm -hmm. herd structure mm -hmm. is what it is presented here a total of 369 mm -hmm. animals. Okay. The problem of the station. This station was developed back in 1970, in 1970 and 72. It took in 2011, and these were some of the problems um, that were highlighted. High mortality, low birth rates, birth and healing rates, delayed maturity amount, replacement use, general weak and unthrifty lungs, and high susceptibility to internal parasites. We had a decline in mature flock weight, and customers vocalized it, their concerns regarding post sale lamb mortality and lamb performance. Based on the culture at the station, the perception was that poor genetics, or the responses that we were getting, were due to poor genetics and inbreeding associated with. There's a further culture, maybe within the region, that the indigenous animals in the region are under performance. The problem statement, despite the adoption of modern technology, the acquisition of improved breeds, the use of high intensive systems, and numerous technical interventions, blending sheep project continue to experience declining sheep performance. The main research question, can the non-genetic factors be managed to improve the performance of tropical pear sheep lambs to attain a live weight of 45 kilograms in 120 days of blending? We have a few secondary questions. What non-genetic factors influence animal performance of blending? What are the current lab management practices of blending? And what are the most applicable non-genetic strategies that blending can adopt to improve the performance of tropical BSG plants. The objective of this study was to identify the major non-genetic limiting factors affecting lambs at blending. Secondly, to maximize lamb survival and optimize full expression of unknown genetic potential. And thirdly, to identify sustainable animal production practices that can be adopted to improve the performance at, of labs at Blenheim. Further justifications, we looked at the role that Blenheim plays is crucial as a genetic repository for tropical gear sheep in the entire Caribbean. Secondly, the need to strengthen the capacity of Blenheim to fulfill its mandate. And third, to develop a framework for an effective extension training program for sheep farms. Hmm. Against the backdrop of all of that, the hypothesis. Tropical hair sheep lambs are not capable of attaining a live weight of 45 kilograms at the age of 120 days or four months. Now we look at the theoretical framework. Presented here is a typical sigmoid curve that expresses growth for animals, human beings, and plants alike. The sigmoid curve. We have the conception stage, we have birth, we have the puberty stage, and finally the mature stage. So all animals, all living things will go through this sigmoid pattern. In the theoretical framework, 
we have two animals presented in this slide. Animal A, which is on the top curve, has a higher mature weight compared with animal B. But the reality is both animals are mature. Just that they are maturing with different weights. But both animals are mature. So it's sigma curve. What impacts? The question is what therefore impacts these curves? We have discovered that there are five major factors that impact these, this curve. At the bottom of the curve, we have water. And water is the first factor that is likely to impact the growth curve of animals. The second factor is nutrition. If the nutrition is bad, the curve will be impacted. The third is management associated with disease. And genetics is the last factor that will impact animal performance and an expression of the sigmoid curve. This slide shows what is likely to happen if the curve is impacted by water or disease or nutrition? What is likely to happen? And the kip in the curve is an expression of what is likely to happen if the curve is impacted. Okay. Then there will be a downward turning of the curve. However, if the condition is corrected, the curve will turn up again and move towards the the material point. This next graph describes in principle what happens on a seasonal basis. And what you're having is jagged movements along the curve. You have a good rain season, you have a bad rain season, or you may have some parasite imposing on the animal, it takes the curve down, the season change or the parasites are removed, the curve goes up again. But the animal is in a seesaw movement as it's going up, going up the curve. Again, just to reinforce here, we're saying water is the first limiting factor. Nutrition, second. Management, having to do with the husbandry, housing, pasture, and the total environment of the animal is the third factor. Disease and genetics is the least limiting factor impacting upon the animal. According to the literature, uh, this is a, uh, an equation that expresses um, animal performance, where P is equal to G plus E. And I think all of us are students are very familiar with it. Where P is the, uh, P is the phenotype. The color, the size, the full expression in terms of what you will see with your eyes. The genetics is that micro level that you're unable to see. And the environment is the environment in which all of this comes together. And so what you see for an animal is a function of the workings of this formula. It's expressed, the animal expresses it. There are other factors that will impact the total performance of the animal. We have the litter sites. If it is born to a litter of one or more um, in the litter, it will affect the size of the animal. The sex, of, sex or gender of the animal, males tend, in most species, males tend to be bigger than females. The birth weight, if, if a lamb is born light, um, it's likely to struggle a little more compared with if it's born uh, heavy and light here being under 2.5 kgs and heavy being as much as 5 kgs. If the animal is castrated or the ovaries are removed, it will affect the expression, the genetic expression of the animal. 
the weaning age, if an lamb is weaned very early and weaning now is typically between six and eight weeks, if it's weaned very early, um, then expressions can be challenged. And the market demands, sometimes market demands vary where the persons want young animals or they want old animals. And the digestive tract development, if the digestive tract is not adequate to develop, um, the animal will not fully express its genetic potential. The methodology used with this investigation was pretty much a mixed method of research in which quantitative and qualitative data uh, was collected, of course, from bank of sources. Right? Um, and this type of research is more or less referred to as an in vivo research, where it's done on the farm rather than in modified, other modified environment and try to do uh, experiments. And then finally, the statistical tools that were used was the Minitab, pretty similar to Excel, and the GPPL wise method. The methodology. At the start of the exercise, uh, in farm internal scanning was conducted, where we are, all the operating systems were evaluated and documented. A rapid farm appraisal and farm audit was done. The problem identification and matrix was formed. Then we had the data collection and analysis. Then we had the decision making and implementation, monitoring and evaluating of the results. We also had staff participation. Now the scope of the research. The research essentially focused on 330 lambs born in three lambing cycles, as I noted earlier, between 2011 and 2013. Uh, here is presented the data regarding the lambing cycles. In cycle one, uh, which took place the breeding was between January, June 2011, and the lambing um, occurred early 2012. Between December 2011 and January 2012, there were 100 used bred, of which 90 gave birth to 120 lambs. Uh, cycle 2, 39 years were bred, 37 gave birth to 62 lambs. And in cycle 3, 102 years were bred 94, 4 gave birth to 148 lambs. It brings us now to the question of the strategic interventions. The first is staff arrangements. We had to move staff around um, to focus specifically on the pregnant use and the lambing process. Uh, weights of the lambs were taken systematically every fortnight. We had automatic waterers being introduced, uh, removing the traditional um, container type watering system, trough and container type watering system that were there. We had pre feeding units introduced. Pre feeding units are units that allow the lambs to feed and not the adults to have access to the same feeding area. We had an ad lib 18% blue protein diet applied. And in every situation, you will have orphan plants to orphan plants who are fed. On the floor of the pen, we had a coated wire mesh installed. One of the challenges with the slatted floor is the problem of lamb, the feet of lambs, newborn lambs particularly, or small lambs, the feet going through the slats on the floor and sticking. And so we had to use the wire mesh to minimize that challenge. We had free access to mineral things, blocks, the use of molasses daily, and we had systematic treatment, testing and treatments for internal parasites. We also had um, adequate use of vitamin and electrolyte mixtures, the use of industrial salt at a rate of four to five percent adjusting as necessary. 
we had the lights installed in the night for management and animal comfort. Part of the strategy also included the use of color coding neck ribbons and to address issues of veterinary issues or uh, attendant management issues. And the way we had red for veterinary, we had blue for farm management, um, strongman management issues, spraying and stuff like that. And where we had lambs that needed to be fed, we had a green color. So it made it easy for attendants to identify uh, challenges to be dealt with. And then item number 15, we had staff training, was a critical part of this um, undertaking. We also had open staff forum for the information and knowledge transfer. We had installed whiteboards for information and documentation of activities. The pens were sanitized routinely. The clocks were held on zero way system. We had rigorous evaluation of the way data and we developed profile for broad-based lab evaluation. 21 strategies were applied. 21 strategies that need not necessarily require financial involvement, but simple management strategies that even at the independent farm level, action could be taken. The core strategy focused on pregnant use in the last trimester, in December 2011, in cycle one, and cycles two and three focused on the complete production system. We sought to minimize all the adverse non-genetic factors and to develop a rapid system analysis interventive approach. The results from the farm audit at the start of the intervention, we recognized that there was no specific feeding program there was no specific production parameters. There were no specific operational plan. And there, was four, there were four record management systems. The results from the intervention that we made, 25 lambs attained a target weight of 45 kilograms live weight at four months of each. There were 24 rams and the one ewe and the BBB is for Barbados Black Belly. The other 24 rams were of mixed, mixed um, strings, but mainly Black Belly, West African, and we had one crossbred bred lamb. Noted below, Black Belly 11, West African 8, and the graded animal, we had six of them. Further results, based on the analysis now, there was no significant difference in the birth weight of the lamb at the statistical reference point, 0 0.5. Secondly, there was no statistical difference for mean 30 days weight. And 30 days is a significant point in terms of managing um, nursing lambs. There was no statistical difference for to today's weight due to sex differences. So at 30 days, there was no different uh, significant difference between between the ages, uh, between the weights of males and females. There was no difference, statistical difference again at 30 day, uh, 30 days due to a year of birth, whether between, or cycle we can put it at, whether between 2011 and 2013. There was no statistical difference due to birth effects. Birth effects being whether they were born as singles or they were born as multiple, multiple um, lambs. And finally on this slide, the highest mortalities were observed among lambs between the zero to 30 day cycle. And this uh, slide presents the lamb crop from the first cycle, 2011-2012. Uh,
this animal was the best performing, the first animal to achieve the live weight of 45 kilograms at 120 days. This represents this lamb, this was the day of weaning. It was weaned at 35 kilograms. So this was at weaning, it was 60 days when it had 35 kilograms. And this represents the point at the 120 days. Uh, the animal in the center, the black belly lamb in the center, is the same lamb that we saw here at 120 days, which is 60 days after, after the first slide. Of course, this is part of the team that was involved in the management operations at Pliny, the staff that was involved in taking care of the animals. Conclusions. We have to reject the hypothesis and conclude that tropical hair sheep can attain a live weight of 45 kilograms at 120 days of age. Males are more likely to achieve the target, and premium grown weights were influenced by management, sex, and year of birth. Conclusion It is critical to ensure that the largest number of animals survive from each crop. However, we recognize that we must pass lab survival and ensure that labs perform at their highest genetic potential. The findings confirmed that genetics was not a major limiting factor affecting lab performance at Blenheim Sheep Project. Greater consideration must be given to non-genetic factors that impact animal performance, productivity, and in general profitability in small rural production. Genetics provide an animal with the hereditary capacity. However, it is the non-genetic factors in the production environment that enables the full expression of the genetic potential. If small ruminant farmers and blending sheep project are to realize greater returns and sustainable farm enterprises, then researchers, managers, and farmers must direct greater attention to the non-genetic factors that impact Production. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, we have only one question, a very short question. Anybody has a short question? Um, one, one or two short ones. Very short. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I was just wondering, um, did you um, control for the age of the um, parents and the number of um, parties? Yeah, the number they would have had between. Uh, okay, for cycle one, um, these were animals in multiple parties. Cycle two were animals in the first party. We were giving birth for the first time. All right. Um, and it seems to express that two and three were giving both uh, multiple parties. Um, it seemed to express that there was no difference in performance based on the parties. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that. Uh, but the parties will express the age way. We didn't take the uh, precise age, but it's a question of whether it's single parity, first loving, or multiple. They gave several words. But the actual age for you know we didn't take that. Next question is Um I was just thinking for what technology in the field of monetary I house. Um maybe we can observe as well. Now we like probably to think about using infrared camera to look at the heat and health of the animal and also the use of GPS to look at the amount of movement you have for the animal because those things might even affect your results of your Okay, um, that's a um, wonderful observation. Um, 
And um, I know actually we've done that type of work at the station already, looking at um, eating disease, uh, animals in the pasture versus animals in the house and stuff like that. It was done by Dean, 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 it's, it's, it was a uh, PhD student. And he looked at that aspect of it. Um, this was a crisis mode. And we had to stem the tide of heavy attrition, heavy losses um, in the herd. And heavy losses in the herd means that the sustainability of the herd is gradually falling away. When the lambs are when the lambs are dying, the potential and the longevity of the herd is gradually falling away, the sustainability of the herd. And so um, yes, the technology is important. But what I wanted to emphasize here is that we're not dealing so much with technology. The issue is dealing with the 101 animal production issues. Um, and getting those 101 animal production issues very, very straight. And we can make money by getting 101 straight. And then we can go up to the to the other, to the other uh, more sophisticated, sophisticated challenges. Yeah. Thanks for the question. George. With the decimal points. With the decimal points. Yes, there's a decimal point. The decimal point. No, no, not decimal point. Let's just go into um, slide of your research. This one? This next note. So, where you tell you 24 rafts in one day. Go back. I think that that's just. No, that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That gives the weight. The weight oh, no, no, this this is this is the um, animals that achieve achieve the yeah achieve the um right. These are the animals that achieve the the objective. Right. 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 And, and as you saw down uh, later in the results, um, there's much challenge about the black belly animals. Um, but the black belly animals were the animal, well, the black belly animal was the first animal to achieve achieve the, uh, the objective. Um, because of the conformation of the animal, one, yeah. two is the the fecundity of the animal it tends to give birth to two yeah. yeah. weak, lighter bird weights. Uh, and so, lambs tend to grow a little slower, but management can correct those that, that growing curve and get it to, to shoot up very fast. Yes, 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 sure. And yeah. you have my you have my, my, my services at your beck and call. Right. Yeah. So, so okay, so before I start, I'm just going there. So you, you, you rejected the non hypothesis. Rejected it. Rejected the non hypothesis. Oh, okay, okay. But again, I was still a little bit um, worried about the hypothesis itself because I would have stated the. Positive. No, I would have stated the way for that because I think it's there, which is not. But I would have said at Glennon because I'm certain other places would achieve that quite easily. Uh, not so, exactly. Well, uh, I'm sure that that is attainable. I mean, I, I, or are you saying that this is the first time this was done? This is the first time this was done. That's recorded and that for that for first, that time, time. first time it was record, recorded with soft radiation. Okay. And it has never been recorded again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, 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 well perhaps you should, you should phrase the whole um, hypothesis and so on a little bit differently. In other words, if you were saying that you are making a a statement that this thing had not been done before, and that this was the first time. I didn't get that impression. I thought you were. You follow the point I'm making? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow it. I follow it. Yeah. And then what, what could have then happened is that you could have, say, quoted what was the highest that has in fact been attained, and therefore that your study is now going past. So, in other words, previously, that what was the highest attained in, in four months? 
understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. I follow that. But if, 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 if you're trying to make that point, then what you'll have to argue, for example, is that the previous level was so much, and now you're going to do a significant step of, of yours against that one. You follow the point of view. When you have a whole herd, then you're saying that this whole herd attained this one. The previous one, the highest was this, and then do a significant test against that. You follow what I'm saying? I'm so it's, it's a, uh, very much appreciated. The earlier work was done at Lenny, um, Dr. Manus Smith um, from the USA, and, or, and a team of uh, other veterinarians that worked with him then. And their best achievement was like about 30, 35 at four months of age. During the early part of the life of the station, a lot of work was done in terms of managing the animals. And even mortalities was, were a problem uh, during that early stage. So they were doing the work, but they never got to this, this level. All right. Um, the PhD um, that I'm involved with takes this to the next level. Uh, and to bring us an overlay the financial aspect of it. Um, how could this be related or uh, translated into, into cash for the farmers? Um, the real challenge with sheep production, permit me, is like any business, it is the rate of turnover. Typically, most of the farmers will turn over sheep one year. What we're talking about here is typically a year, year and a half for the farmers to get 100 African kgs. Take, on an average, a year to a year and a half. And of course, in any business, the rate of turnover is the key. We did not bring in this cost. The next study now, what we are trying to establish, do we have the genetic potential to achieve this? Um, typically, in the industry, and not just with sheep, our producers believe that the resource that we have is not good. So we're always importing some other new something, right? The conclusion here now is that the resource that we have has the genetic potential to achieve what we want, reasonable expectations. And therefore, it is about exploiting it. The question here now is the question of cost. We did not impute cost into this. It was just a matter of expressing the genetics. We're going to put costs now. The PhD work is put costs into this and establish the merits of it. And for myself, I can say that I did this work many years ago before it became academic like this. And I could have gotten an animal to triple its weight in 90 days. Um, somebody asked? Like a butter? What is the revenue? Just what we're talking about today. Um, to triple its weight in 90 days, right? Um, and of course, it's rigorous, rigorous of the team. Um, and actually, I was working at tripling the weight in 90 days. Um, and the animals, I'm not saying every last animal, but the animals responded in the production environment. And I'm not talking about imputing new genetics, working with the genetics that you have, and working on the factors that you have, real the control over you know, the, the housing, the feed, the light, the pen, the safety of the animals and stuff. Okay. No, um, this is wonderful, very clear. And we learned a lot, and uh, I would like well, all of you to give him a hand of The only thing is that I would ask Dr. Pemberton and ask you to look at the hypothesis. I had the same question. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Now for a coffee break, and then the general meeting of the society will start at quarter past four. Quarter past four after the coffee break, we we'll have the general meeting of the Caribbean Agro Economic Society right in this room at four fifty.
Yeah, the, the hotel had promised that we could start breakfast a little early, about 7, sorry, 6 45 tomorrow morning, so that we can go to the hotel, can, so that we can leave here about 7 30. Right? This was our number time, 7 30, so we can get, try to get to the breakfast early, and those who are not at the hotel, remember, we leave here at 7 30 for field trip tomorrow. So will you live streaming?